Okay, hello, I'm Gamir and today in this Tesh Hard Pro video I will do a review of the Galaxy A20 Oh wait, A10 I meant because Yeah, they have the same CPU But in terms of the other features like the display, the USB Type-C These, even the speakers, like even so most, most of like the speakers Then it just makes a big difference but the price is very similar you just pay like what 30 bucks more or 40 bucks more for the a20 because that's what i would say to just go and buy the galaxy a20 because the a10 is pretty good but <clears throat> only if you don't have the money to buy the a20 you want a a series phone then you can go for the a10 but I would recommend to go for the A20 now I'm going to go over the points of the Galaxy A20 to see what I liked it about it and what I didn't like it first of all the first thing that you see on the phone is the screen it's almost bezel-less it has a sheen and a notch but it's almost bezel-less so that's why it is called Infinity U display because the bezels are so thin that I even got accidental touches from time to time and yes I know that it's not as bad as a Galaxy Note or a Galaxy S with the curved edges on the screen with the accidental touches but at least I use a case on these phones so I don't get those but on that on this Galaxy A10 sometimes it happens that I get accidental touches and yeah one of the good things about that phone that screen is very large like it's almost as large as my note 9 screen my note 9 like it's it's almost the same size and probably the 820 goes even larger it's probably so surprising the the size of my note 9 screen now another point the TFT display that's what the box says the box says it has a TFT LCD display GSM Arena says it has a IPS LCD display which is false because the official specs list says that it has TFT even though it's a TFT display I was expecting the display to look bad but it looked actually pretty good the viewing angles doesn't distortion the colors or anything just change the brightness or the way how bright it looks but apart from that it's just a really good display for the price like honestly $130 for a display that big and good the only downside is that it's only 720p but I mean 720p is not that bad after I've been used to using my Note 9 with the 440p uh, resolution but the bad thing obviously is the notch I will I'm sh I will show you many things that the notch just blocks on the way it's just very annoying that the notch blocks it so yeah that's a really bad stuff there now the body of the phone is really slim when I was using the phone it actually is so slim that bro it, it could be it, it, it I could say that this is the second most slimmest phone that I ever used. The first one will be, the top one will be the Galaxy, I mean not the Galaxy, it's actually the iPhone 6. But this one gets second place, this the slimmest phone ever. Obviously people will use it on a case, but that's something to mention. Though I think that it's good that it is, a phone is very slim, that way when someone puts a case it doesn't get that much thicker. Now, let's talk about the software. The features on One UI are about the same as my Note 9 One UI. They almost have the same stuff. Even the Galaxy A10 has a more recent One UI version than my Note 9. My Note 9 has One UI 1.0, this one has 1.1. It has some very minor difference in visuals, but some other stuff that I actually want to get on my Note 9 um, are there on the A10. Another thing to mention, I did not expect the phone to have Nox, but it does have Nox and secure folder, which is really useful to save all the porn to hide it from your family, your friends, and your 
other loved ones. Performance. Like I said, the CPU is the same Galaxy S820. So if you use a 820 or you saw a review about it, the performance is just the same thing. The performance is good. It even impressed me. For $130, the phone can run at phone 9 at the lowest settings. It runs better than the Galaxy what? The Galaxy S5 Active. Or the S6 Active even, I could say. It runs really smooth it is with no issues. And then the RAM is really low. Two gigabytes of RAM for Android is not enough anymore. You gotta get more RAM. Unless if you don't multitask, you don't you just use like two apps at maximum at the same time, I guess that's fine. But for more intense stuff, no. I would recommend just buying a phone that has at least four or three gigs of RAM. Another thing. The camera is it takes good pictures let me show you some good pictures comparing with my note 9 because that's very unfair but i mean what else do i have to compare the s6 active like come on obviously the s6 active will destroy so yeah i could just use my note 9 because i was covering my note 9 all the time as well very good photos in the daylight but really bad in the low light simple Records the 1080p video, which is great because phones, I, I thought that it could record at 720p But it records 1080p, it looks good And it does not have live focus Maybe because it does not have the dedicated camera for portraits But then the Note 9 has the live focus without the dev camera Now, the battery it's long lasting. 3500 million powers, I think, is good. Good battery. It does not support fast charging. The A20 does, by the way, and it has a 4000 million power battery. That's why I say that you should get the A20 instead. I mean, another thing uh, the micro USB port is old. Um, phone is moving to the Type C port. Uh, maybe Samsung did it to cut cost, but it's just a port. Come on. And you could buy an older flagship for the price and get a much better experience. But like I said, you can also buy the Galaxy A20. It's much better. Okay, so if you have the option to between the A20 and the A10, just go for the A20. Pay the extra bucks. It will be worth it. And that's about it folks, if you liked the video press the like button and if you're not subscribed just press the subscribe button like come on just press the goddamn button it's just right there